Hi, in today's video, I'd like to talk about the representation of time in my personal knowledge management system. Specifically, I want to show you my daily notes page in Obsidian and talk you through my daily note taking workflow. According to Richard Saul Worman, there are only five ways to organize information, any information. These five ways are location, alphabet, time, category, and hierarchy. He calls this the latch principle. Whenever you're designing an information system, these are the five aspects you should consider. I make the argument that whenever you are designing your personal knowledge management system, you should make every effort possible to include all of these aspects, all five of these. This will maximize the reusability of the information in your knowledge graph. In earlier videos, I've already talked about the application of time in your knowledge graph. I introduced the Obsidian Map View plugin as well as I showed you this idea about the fantasy maps of content. When it comes to time, there are many ways to represent time in a knowledge graph. It could be as simple as integrating your calendar into the knowledge graph, but it could also involve the use of various timelines, for example, for the purpose of historical analysis. I like Matt McGann's concept of the daily notes first and the content first approach very helpful. In the daily notes first approach, all of your notes are linked to the daily notes page. So for example, if you're researching a topic that day or if you're reading a book, if you had a meeting, if you visited a location, you make notes on your daily notes page and you link all of this information to the daily notes page. You might have a separate note for the book or for the location you visited or the person you met, but everything has a footprint on your daily notes page. That is the backbone of your knowledge graph. In the content first approach, on the other hand, the backbone of your knowledge graph is the context within which the information is meaningful. So if you're reading a book, you're going to first link it to the topic that you're researching and not so much to the date on which you read it. You might still make a link to the date, but that is not the primary location of the information. The information is tied to the context, to the topic that you're working on. I don't think that there's a one size fits all approach. So in my own case, I'm trying to apply both of the approaches to my knowledge graph. So this is how my daily notes page looks like. And in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the work section of the page. And because I didn't want to share any personal or confidential information with you, I replaced names with these uh, substitutes. So I have Bob the Builder, Mug the Truck and Rolly the Steamroller. And instead of projects, I have projects A, B, C and K. Hopefully this is not going to hinder understanding. So if I look at my notes uh, for Wednesday, then you can see that I had only one meeting with Rolly. And this is the note from my meeting, but you can see this has a different background color. And that is because this is a transclusion. So this text resides on Rolly's page and is referenced right here. And you can see that on Rolly's page, I have this section for Wednesday and that's where I can find the information. So if I click to open the link, then Here's my note on Rolly's page. So let's look at the structure of Rolly's page. By the way, all of my pages follow this structure. So I have a header, I have a section for tasks, and then I have my notes. The task section is a data view query. I simply took this from the data view help. This is the simplest possible data view query out there. 
it uses this uh, task list function in data view there's one special thing here uh, you might have noticed i have this uh, random number here uh, as a comment the reason i have this is because i have exactly the same query on all of my detailed pages and unless i make them different by having this random number in them obsidian live preview doesn't always refresh because it thinks it is the same query that it has already cached and to improve speed obsidian doesn't refresh the query by having this fingerprint this random number here this forces obsidian to refresh because it will recognize that this is a different query compared to the previous one but anyway uh, apart from this technicality i have this section with tasks and you can see that in a meeting on project b i took an action and that action comes up here now if i open up project a for example then you will see that on project a again i have the header the task and the notes and i can see that on this meeting with Rolly, i had taken this action so this referencing does indeed work if we go one day further actually it's going to be a week and a day so this is a week later on thursday um, i had a meeting with bob that day as well as i had a project meeting on project b but i want to show you the meeting with bob because this is the more interesting one what I want to draw your attention to is here I have this section about project K and under project K I have some meeting notes and so what happened here let me open up uh, the page here with uh, Bob what happened here is during our discussion I took some notes I recorded an action for Muck but then we had uh, we engaged in a conversation about project K and I decided that that discussion is better suited uh, on the page for project K because that's where uh, it belongs so here I created a subsection that has uh, three hash marks so this is a third level indent that's important because the dates are always second level headings uh, and anything under it third level because this is required to make sure that the transclusions start and stop at the right place uh, on the daily notes page but then if i come here i go to project case page here i know that i'm this the context for this note is that it was taken on thursday but it was taken in a discussion with bob the builder so on project k's page i know that this discussion i know the source and the context of the discussion uh, but uh, but it's on the project page which is i think the right page because i had quite some detail here uh, it is the right uh, location for that piece of information the other bit i want to show you with bob's page is you can see i have multiple notes here and typically uh, in real life you would have a long list of notes here the way i organize it or the way my script works is this is in a chronological order i always insert the new page right under the notes section so the next one would come right here and this will ensure that i see the most recent note on top and if i want to see the history i can scroll down and read the history of the page and then project b again is similar and if i move on to uh, oops, the next day on friday i had one uh, meeting again it was about project b but in the context of the meeting on project b uh, i had a discussion with bob the builder and we discussed something so let's say that today 
I have a meeting with uh, mock. So how would that look like? The way I create that meeting is I type in mock's name and I create this link and then I run my meeting note macro or templator script and what the templator script does is it automatically takes me to the page uh, for mock. It adds this section with the reference to today's date and the cursor was right here so I can already start typing and I can start to take note. The benefit of this approach is also that immediately as I'm taken here I can see the different tasks that involve Muck and in this case I see that there are two things I'm waiting for from Muck and there's also a topic I noted down that I need to discuss with uh, Muck and I also can see what's the source of these discussions if I want even more context I can control hover and read the context here uh, and I think this is quite helpful if I come back then you can see that uh, I have my note here and then for example if I have another meeting here maybe we talk about project K I have a meeting on project K again I type in the link I uh, start my meeting note uh, script and you can see that uh, nicely in a uh, the most recent note appeared on top and let's say during this meeting uh, we talk about project a and i want to project a and i want to make a note on that in this specific location then i would enter project a here and press and execute my templator script with that I now created a note on project A's page that references the discussion that I'm in the project steering committee for example for project K and I had to take some note here and you can see here that this was automatically created as a third level heading and if I go back to the daily notes page then I can see my notes right here the way it works is i take notes these type of notes i don't take these type of notes about everything so as i mentioned earlier i will not do this for book summaries or i'm not going to do this for the topics i research but typically for work related topics uh, like projects and people and then anything that comes up in those meetings for example uh, name of systems or other stuff I use this approach and the way it works is I have actually a page for each of the topics and you've seen these uh, examples so in my knowledge graph I have a location where I keep a diary on all of these topics and then the way my page looks like is I have every page follows the same basic structure where I have the name of the page is the name of the topic I by the way organize these topics into folders so I have a folder for projects I have a folder for people I have a folder for systems for vendors etc I find this uh, helpful in organizing the information this is also to some extent a, a domain for that uh, information and then I have these three sections the header the tasks and the notes the header holds the basic information about the unit I have my tasks which is a very simple data view script and uh, this is the script uh, you can see this uh, part right here this is my templator code to insert that random number and then the note section is the way I explained it just earlier so I organize notes into sections and the sections are headed by the date uh, on which they were taken and if they were taken in the context of another discussion then that other topic where the discussion came up 
I always start my notes on the daily notes page. So typically I will sit down with someone for a meeting or I will have a project meeting. I start on the daily notes page. And then as the discussion evolves, I might want to create a specific note about uh, a topic that we are discussing and then it is nested like this. And I have a simple templater script to help me with all of this. This is the templater script right here. And what the templater script does is it creates a, a new section on the topics page with date and the context if relevant. And it also inserts a transclusion in the location where it was executed. And with this, uh, with only a few clicks, or actually I have a shortcut for this templator script, I can very fluidly uh, create these transclusions and record the information uh, where it belongs. And then what are the benefits of this approach? So I find that uh, this way, the daily note page, contains a log of my day. I can find all my meetings and I can find all of my notes in chronological order. I can simply scan that page and find out what happened that day. I can flip back to previous days and can read the notes there as well. So this to me is a very helpful approach to understand what has happened. But at the same time, I also have separate diaries or logs for each of the topics uh, that I deal with. So if I open up a person's page, I can see all my discussions with that person. If I open up the page for a project, I can see all my notes regarding that project and so on. And this way I store each piece of information where it is most relevant, but through the nested transclusions, it all appears in the different locations where it's also relevant. So it also appears on the daily notes page, maybe on the page of the person that I was talking to, and it is there on the project or system page where the note actually belongs. And because I have this task section at the top of every page, Whenever I'm in a context, I immediately know what actions or to-dos I have recorded and I can follow those up. And finally, I have this CSS snippet that formats transclusions. And what this does is I remove the, so out of the box, Obsidian will not show the entire transclusion, but you will have a scroll bar and you'll have boxes around it. I prefer to have everything in a long form without the scroll bars and this small CSS snippet uh, helps me with that. So in a nutshell, this is my daily note taking approach for the topics that I want to capture on the daily notes page. This is not limited to projects and meetings with people. This can involve a lot of other things, but I do primarily use it for my meetings with people and my involvement in various projects. And for the other type of information, I actually use the content first type of approach where I link the information where it belongs. I link it to the context. So I hope you found this uh, walkthrough of my daily note taking workflow helpful. I'm going to include in the video description the link to those few scripts I have. So to the templator script for the meetings page, I'm going to include the CSS snippet as well as my task data view query. And if you want, you can reuse these and hopefully um, this is going to work for you and you'll find this helpful. Thank you.